What's up guys, Van Zeeben here from Designs by Zephyr, and uh, this episode we're going to be doing uh, Collision Box. So I'm not going to be using any um, libraries inside the game because, or inside Java, sorry, because we'd like to do this ourselves and actually learn how to do this ourselves and how, how kind of rectangles work. That's what we would uh, normally use as the rectangle class, but we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do, um, actually let's go over last episode what we did, we'll go over that first, is if we run our game here. We did the player animation, and we got the player walking around on the screen, um, and that was pretty good. So we see him walking around here, and uh, yeah, so it's looking pretty nice so far. One issue, however, with this is he can walk off the screen like this, and we don't want that. He can just kind of go wherever the hell he wants. So we're going to fix that today. So today we are going to go into the tiles class here, and we have a basic tile here, but now these tiles aren't solid. We're using basic tile for void tiles and for yep so those aren't solid tiles so we want to make it solid tile so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new class in the uh, tiles package and we're gonna call it basic solid tile okay simple simple and what we're gonna do here is to simplify it because we don't want to rewrite everything in basic tile we're just going to extend basic tile um, like that Control -O. And then it'll ask us to add the constructor, so we add the constructor. Okay, it's the same constructor, and instead of what we could normally do is instead of um, we could just for basic tile add a like a, an extra flag here to combat this one. I think it is. It might be this one. It might be this one. I think this is emitter though, but we could just add a flag to sort with that, deal with that one. But we just want a solid tile here, so we're just going to simplify and go this dot solid equals false or true. Sorry solid there so we're just going to do that just to simplify things and make it i don't know kind of a lot a lot more oriented um now what we're going to do is we're going to actually make some solid tiles so the stone tile for one we want that to be solid and we want the grass to be solid okay so we're going to save that and uh import sort our imports um next what we're going to do is we're going to go into the mob class here and in the mob class, we're going to create a new function for the collision detection. So here, we're going to say protected uh, boolean. We're going to say is solid tile. So what this function is going to be is uh, kind of like a relative movement function to see if it's solid. We want to get the last tile that you were standing on and the new tile and compare them. And if the tile hasn't changed, we're not going to bother looking at it. We're just going to say get out of here. Um, but if the tile has changed and the tile is solid and it's a new solid tile, then we're going to we're going to notify that. So let's do this. Um, some parameters first off is we're going to need how much we're moving x and how much we're moving y. So these will be these two variables here when we move. Uh, actually, these two variables here. Um, next, what we're going to need is we're going to need um, an x variable and a y variable. And these will these x and y variables will be different from the ones at the top. Uh, first thing we're going to put here is return false, just so that if, if nothing else happens, we're going to return false, and that'll be at the bottom. And then above the return false, uh, we're going to create two new tiles here. So we're going to say tile, and then last tile uh, is equal to level dot get tile, and then this oops uh, this dot x plus x, and then shift that over three. And we'll actually put it in brackets, which I neglected to do. And shift it over three just so that we get the actual position of those tiles instead of like the the coordinate um, and then comma oops three comma this dot y plus y and then shift that over three as well and that's going to get us the last tile that we're standing on or yeah the, the tile that we're currently standing on before we move because we make the move after we check this has collided function uh, next we're going to have tile new tile uh, this is going to be the tile that we're going to. So it's going to be level.getTile. And it's going to be almost exactly the same as up here. So we're going to say this.x plus x, but then we're going to need to add xa to it, this variable here. So we're, that's that's going to be where we're moving to. Uh, and we're going to shift it 3, and the same with this. This.y plus y um, plus ya. And shift that over 3 as well. Oops, and I spelled level wrong. Uh, one thing that you probably do need to do, I think I went back and fixed this earlier, but in the level class, I believe when we did the get tile function down here, uh, we just had it um, a private. 
So just make this function public here. And uh, what we're actually going to do is just clean this up because it looks a little sloppy here. We're going to say 0 is greater than x or uh, 0 is greater than y. That's just going to make it a little more readable. So it's like 0 is greater than x and then... So it's kind of like when you do this in uh, kind of math, I guess, kind of. I don't know if it's really math. When you kind of do this kind of thing, it's just doing the same thing, just so it's a little re more readable. Also, we're going to add an equal sign here. Um, this is just to verify that the equals are the same, because we want to keep within the bounds of the actual board, and I screwed that up last time, and I noticed that in my video. So that should be an equal sign there for the X and the Y. Uh, back to the mob class here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say if um, the level is not equal to null... Actually, no, I won't bother with that. We'll do that up here. If the level is equal to null return. So that's just going to say if, if for some uh, return false. If for some reason the, the level somehow got called by something, we're going to return false. And because we don't want to do these two statements as well. Uh, then we're going to say if the last tile is dot equals new tile and with a not sign in front of them, so if they don't equal the same thing, and new tile dot is solid return true. So that's going to verify that we're um, that the tiles aren't the same, which is the first part here, and that the new tile is actually a solid, and then return false. So now we're going to go into the player class here, and I put that class, actually I'll this, I put that class into the mob class, just so that we can access this from all type of entities, so that we can verify where entities are, and uh, how, like, what what tiles they're standing on, and verify the bounds of that, because it's not just specific to a player, we may, we may not want a sheep going over certain tiles and stuff like that. On to the has collided function, the final collision box, this is where the meat and potatoes is. What we need now is we need a collision box here. We need to actually define where the edges of the player are when he's walking. Uh, typically, if you're doing an actual flat down 2D game, like a top down, you just do the whole player, and you just say this whole, like, sorry, this whole thing is, is the collision box. But we don't want to do that because his, his head hitting a rock, for example, or the edge, wouldn't really make sense because his head's kind of off the ground. So we want to do it somewhere down here. We'll probably do it about there, maybe up here. Um, another thing, I want my player to be 8 wide. I want him to be able to fit, I want these legs, this is 8 wide here, I want him to be able to fit into a tile. Uh, correct. So I want him to be 8 wide and probably about here and down to there. So that's going to be the collision box, I'm thinking. Uh, so now I'll just write those parameters. Now all we're going to need is we're going to need these four these four here. We're going to need an X min, a Y min, this one here, a Y max, a Y max over here, and an X max over here. Okay. So typically what we could do is we could just do one for loop and go through all of these these points in here. But we don't want to do that because these kind of middle points are pointless if the outside points are already taken care of. So that's what we're going to do. So on to the collision box function. Uh, here what we're going to need is we're going to need our x-min, so x-min is equal to 0, uh, int x-max is equal to 8, no, 7, yeah, 7, because um, it's 0 to 7, uh, int y-min is equal to, let's say, about 3, and int y-max is equal to about, I don't know, 7, sure. Um, next what we're going to do is we are going to do the loop. Now I'm going to do four loops here. I'm going to four four loops here. What? I <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do four four loops here because um, it's simply easier to do that. You could include this into one big function, but for readable readability sake, we're going to go through each line. We're going to loop through each different line and do that in a for loop. So this is the first one. This one's going to be the x. So it's going to be the x min. Uh, x min, or just x is less than x max and then x++. plus plus. So this one's going to loop from this x min to this x max. Now the y doesn't change at all, so we're just going to do an if um, is solid tile x a y a, because we don't need to worry about those, and then we're going to do x, and then we're going to do y min. And then we're just going to say return true. Okay, so there's that one. Now we're just going to copy this down four times, or once, I'll copy it once. And instead of using the Y min here, we're going to use the Y max. Okay? And I'm going to copy this down again. So so this one here, this second for loop here, just to explain it, uh, goes from this this one right here, 
to this one over here. So it goes on the bottom, so we got the top and the bottom done now. Now we're going to need the left and right, so let's copy it down again. Now we're going to change all these variables from X to Y. So Y, Y. So now it reads uh, for int Y is equal to Y min. Y is less than Y max, Y plus uh, plus. Next we're going to do is solid tile, and this one is going to be X min. So it's going to say is solid tile, X A Y A, X min, and then just Y. Okay? So this one right here is going to be from the X min to the X max, or to the the X min along that line from the Y min to the Y max. So it's this this left side here. Uh, next we need to do the the right side. So that one's going to be the same kind of thing, but instead of X min, we're going to use X max. Okay? So that's that. Uh, you could actually split this up into I don't know, two for loops or or four. F this is just a very simple way to uh, do it for us, so that we can see exactly what we're doing. Uh, now we're going to actually before I do that. Let's go back into the level class and let's actually change the generating again. Let's change it back to what we had it before. So if um, x times y percent 10, what did I do? I think I did 5, but I'm going to change this to a 7 just to give it a little more space in between. Um, just because I want to actually see. I want to I want to see some space and be able to walk between stuff. Uh, stone. Okay, well, there was an actual error. There's one thing that I didn't, that I overlooked here, and I kind of, I don't know, I didn't overlook it, I just wrote it wrong. Um, if we look here, I actually made the void tile a basic tile, and the grass tile a solid tile, which we don't want to have. So we want to put the void tile to be solid, and the grass tile just to be a tile. So there's that. So now if we run the game, uh, <laughs> this should actually be fixed now. So once the game launches, uh, we will see that we can walk around on the grass, right here so we can walk around on the grass we see that I'm hitting the um, I'm walking and I'm hitting the stone now and I'm not moving on all four sides so that's good and you'll see here that I'm I can go up to this place on the top this place on the bottom and I can actually get stuck in here now so I'm not stuck in between them uh, also if I can find a spot actually right here if I just go straight down my player can actually fit in between here although I can't I'm trying to move left and right right now and I can't because my player is only eight wide uh, another thing, if we try to go to the top, you'll see I hit the top, and the side, I hit the side. Let's just walk down here through all this, and let's just kind of path through this, I guess. Just because we can now, because now we have some collision. Uh, we're going to go check the max values of the X and the Y to verify that those are correct. So you'll see right now I can't walk down anymore, and we'll go over all the way. And I shouldn't be able to walk that way anymore, either. And I can't, there we go. And these are still the same as you'll see if you reference my play player size, the edges on him. Uh, if, if the collision boxes isn't quite right for you, if these numbers didn't really work for you, um, you may want to make him a little bit like taller or whatever the hell you want, or a little fatter, I guess, closer to the ground. Um, you can change those as, you're, as you want, the, the X-Men, Y-Men, and all that. But uh, I think I like these so far. Yeah, I like these. So that's been this tutorial on collision boxes. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be sure to like and comment the video if you have any questions or queries as to uh, what you've done, if you've done something wrong. Uh, this has been Van Zeben, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.